This is a high power model rocket. But how do you recover it without losing it? And what about that long walk to get the rocket back? Can we shorten that? This is dual SEP dual deploy, a method to recover high altitude model rockets without them drifting a long way like they would with just one large chute at Apogee. The idea is to pop a small chute at Apogee, and then later on a larger chute at around 700 feet or lower to have a nice smooth landing. A dual deploy rocket has three sections. The first part on the bottom is your standard rocket. The drogue chute is housed in here. The rocket separates from the next part right about here. Next is the avionics bay. After that is the main chute, which separates right here. The tube which the avionics bay is in is more commonly called a switch band, but that just didn't seem right for this considering it is way taller than a switch and has a whole camera looking out. The avionics bay is held together by two metal rods that go through the tube and can yet connect to each 3D printed cap. On each side there is a cup to hold the black substance that shall not be named, but you can probably figure out, to pop the drogue and main chutes. Right next to them is an eye bolt to attach the parachutes and shock cord. Those two metal rods also have the added perk of being able to hold the electronics. For the avionics, I have my custom flight computer, which controls all the parachutes obviously, and a battery, along with a run cam split 4 hanging out the side. Everything is held on with two 3D printed brackets to hold the flight computer, and a ton of zip ties. It's not clean and it doesn't look good, but it gets the job done. The two end caps are 3D printed and get an eye bolt to attach the parachutes along with two Wago connectors that make it super easy to attach the igniter for the pyrotechnics. The igniters to ignite the blag substance are not your normal igniters. We could use igniters like this, but these take a lot of current, meaning you would need a big battery like this, but we do not have enough space for that. So we use this. It's a low current igniter that uses a much smaller battery like this and really likes to go boom. Now since this is custom code on a custom flight computer, the first step is to always ground test. I'm sure once you ground test, nothing could ever possibly go wrong in flight. I don't know how this video could possibly be related to what I'm saying. Don't use accelerometers in flight. Don't do it. Since using accelerometers clearly didn't work, we're going to use the barometer instead. To do this, we'll calculate how many meters per second the rocket is going upward, and then in an instant it goes below 5 meters per second, pop out the drogue chute. The main chute is much more simple. If the rocket goes over 500 feet, it marks that it has gone over 500 feet. After that, it looks to see if it goes back below 500 feet. If it does, it fires the drogue parachute. Now it's time to test, on the ground, using a vacuum chamber. By doing this, we can simulate a flight without risking a dangerous failure and wasting a $50 rocket motor. And would you look at that, it worked perfectly. That's, uh, that's something I don't get to say very often. So now, the last step is to fly it. Dang, that worked well. But how do we know that wasn't a fluke? Well, 
Obviously, we just fly it again, so yeah, that's what I did. Hey, look at that. It worked. I guess it wasn't a fluke. Yeah. You know, but I wonder whatever happened to the first flight of this rocket. I didn't really cover that in this video. I wonder what happened to it.